In this lecture, we will create a game screen and then bind and update the data contained within a script with its UI representation. First, let's create a screen that will contain a UI of a simple game. It's going to be called game screen. Inside it, again, we need a top level visual element that will contain all other elements. So uh, let's create a visual element and let's call it game screen and then divide it into two sections. The top panel and the bottom panel. And we can also add the menu style sheet because we would like to use the menu background color and assign it to both these panels. Let's also change some attributes of the game screen. And set a grow to one. And justified content to space between. This way, we make sure that the top and bottom panels will always remain near the edges of the screen. We also want to set the flex direction of both top and bottom panel to row. Because the elements inside these panels will be placed horizontally. Now, in order to place different parts of the interface in the four edges of the screen, we have to further divide the top and bottom panels into the left and right section. And they will be named accordingly. The top left panel, top right panel, bottom left panel, and bottom right panel. We want to set the flex grow attribute for all of them to 1. and flex direction to row for the left panels and row reverse for the right panels. This way, whatever other visual elements we put into the left panels, they will be sequenced in order starting from the left side. And for the right panels, the sequence will start from the right side. However, because the top left panel will only have one element showing the current status of the ammunition, we are going to simplify this interface and reset the flex direction attribute of the top left panel. Now let's create the buttons and the labels, the final layer of the interface. So create a back to menu button inside the top right panel. And assign a button class to it. And also set the width and height to 100 pixels.
We also need two other buttons with the same style in the bottom left panel. The first one, the shot button, and the second, the reload button. Now let's go back to the top left panel where we create two labels. The first one is gonna be an ammo label and the second one ammo count. And you should also assign button class to both of them. Now, even though it's not a button, we're going to use this style to simplify things. However, ideally, you should always create a separate styles if they are assigned to a visual element of a different type. Let's also change the size of these labels to 100 pixels of width and 50 pixels of height. After you're done with your UI builder, save the changes and go back to Unity. Repeat the previous steps by creating a new game screen object and add a panel render and even system to it. Assign necessary fields. and open panel manager script to add new parts of code. In the panel manager, we have to make similar changes as before. So let's start by creating a new panel render variable, a game screen. Now to keep things consistent, let's organize all places in code where we have a list of all the screens in the following order. So the main menu screen is the first one, game screen is the second, and the settings screen is gonna be the last, similarly to what we already have in Unity Editor. Then scroll down and in the data binding section, duplicate part of the bind main menu screen method and name it bind game screen. You should be able to easily understand this method and all other changes since they are similar to what was already explained. So I'm going to bring these changes into the code but I want to explain them line by line.
Now we can move on to the most interesting part of this lecture, which is data binding. Binding means connecting, and we are going to connect the M label with the actual value in code. So first, create two private variables of integer type called maxammo. and current ammo and assign a default value of 10 to both of them. Then create a private field of label type called ammo label. Next, because we want to simulate a very simple game, create a reset game method under the start function. It's going to reset the status of the game each time we start it by first assigning the max ammo value to the current ammo. And then it will check whether an actual label in the interface is actually assigned to an ammo label. Then we modify text field of this label to show the current state of the ammunition. And remember that we have to do it each time the current ammo value changes, if we want the change to be reflected in the interface. So, of course, you should be careful when using dot to string method in such case, but to simplify things, we're going to use it here. So, after this method is created, let's add it to bind main menu screen method in the start button section. So, the game is resetted each time we start a new game. Next, move on to bind game screen method. And here, just like with the button, we assign the ammo count label from the UI document to the ammo label field. Next, we add a support for shot and reload buttons. So whenever we click on the shot button, the current ammo number is going to decrease by one. And when we click reload button, the current ammo value will be resetted to max ammo value. Now, Save the changes and go back to Unity, where the last remaining thing is to assign a game screen object to a game screen field in a panel manager. We can also save changes here. And we can test whether if our interface actually works. And we can see the current 
status of our ammunition. When we click on the shot pattern, the value decreases. When we click reload, it goes back to the initial value. And when we click on go to main menu screen button, we go back to the main screen. Now, last thing that we have to do is to name the labels. So we're gonna name the first label as ammo, the shot button is gonna have a shot text and similarly reload pattern. And the back to menu button will just display menu. Now we can save these changes and go back to Unity. And when we test the interface, now everything looks as it should. And of course, when we, for example, make a few shots and go back to menu and then back to the game, the ammo value is resetted. So everything works as expected. To sum up this lecture, you have learned how to bind and update the data contained within a script with its UI representation. We have also created a game screen where the data is displayed.